thank you very much dr sadi for the kind introduction good evening uh, everybody uh, i thank uh, dr mayur and his team for this uh, really big academic uh, event uh, where there are more than uh, 100 speakers and 1000 delegates of more than 1000 delegates uh, i would like to congratulate you for this mammoth task um ganesh has already given uh, the, the gist uh, and how to do lot of things in a child who is coming with short stature so today uh, dr mayur has asked me to talk about growth hormone therapy indications so i'll touch upon indications and he is more interested in counseling technique how to get more patients and how to convince the patients so, so let me see uh, if i can do that in next uh, 15 20 minutes uh, um i will start off with my case whom i saw this boy was seen about 20 years back uh, so charge is also one of the old ones and you can see here he was short and he is 8 years and he is only 95 so on an average if you think he is only 4 years old and he is uh, had normal body proportions so we have ruled out the achondroplasia or hypochondroplasia or any other uh, uh, disproportionate uh, short stature He was intelligent and active, so uh, hypothyroidism is a little bit ruled out, but not completely. But if you see here, he has got very immature face with a small mid face and frontal bossy and chubby face. He had delayed the dentition and microphages. Um, so putting everything together, um, delayed bone age, normal thyroid functions, MRI was done; it was normal. We went ahead and did clonidine stimulation test. and the maximum growth hormone response was uh, only 1 nanogram per ml so we made a diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency and you can see this boy after four years of treatment he has just gone above like climbing a ladder so this is what is the response if you are really diagnosing the condition correctly giving the correct dose and doing proper follow up and every visit has to be which book counsel and you can see what is the change in this boy after four years so if you see the effects of growth hormone why are we talking so much about growth hormone growth hormone hypothalamic hormone igf1 axis you can see that we have uh, both the stimulatory and the from the hypothalamus and then we have the release of growth hormone which has effect on all these things um has a fat fat breakdown skeletal muscles it takes glucose uptake then there is glucose release um, has the liver acts uh, combines with the receptors and along with the igf1 have has got all these effects including protein synthesis and bone elongation but more than this as a practitioner i think you need to know these three uh, uh, graphs you need to know that this growth hormone is secreted in pulses at least 8 to 10 in a day and you can see here it is the um uh, during or just about to sleep there is a nocturnal surge that is one thing set so two other things are you can see here um it is in the nocturnal and during the puberty so maximum growth happens during the puberty and in the night and it is pulsatile so doing random growth hormone is completely banned that is the reason i have put these graphs so what are the fda approvals we, we don't have any indian approvals uh, as of now so we always follow the fda approvals uh, it was as early as 1985 the pediatric uh, ghp was approved first then was the chronic renal failure then came the turner syndrome and adult ghp hiv wasting syndrome then in 97 was achondroplasia you can see that this small big child and then in 2000 prader willi syndrome where you can diagnose short stature hypogonadism and uh, uh, obesity uh, either by methylation or by fish technique you can diagnose uh, prader willi syndrome and then 2001 was sga we are still lacking in that we are not taking this sgas and that was one of the indication in 2001 and 2003 was the idiopathic short stature uh, dr ganesh has already told when you have done all the test and all the reports are normal then you will call as idiopathic short stature so 2003 short bowel and idiopathic short stature were the indications and then it came the transitional of the growth hormone deficient children to the adulthood where all my friends sitting here would be taking care and then 
2006 is the shocks and then was the Noonan syndrome. Um, so this is how all these indications came till 2010. After that, we don't have many indications. But uh, if you see, the growth promoting indications of growth hormone are only for these conditions. That is pure GHB, Turner, shocks, ISS, chronic renal failure, Noonan, skeletal dysplasia. But for the metabolic conditions, we are using growth hormone for Prader-Willi, HIV, adult GHB, and short bubbles. So after the bones are fused, there is no point in using growth hormone. You want to make that child uh, tall. So you have to make sure the there is still the open epiphysis before you think of giving growth hormone. Other indications, lot of trials going on uh, where GH is um, given, but these are not FDA approved, like precocious puberty, very severe short stature along with familial short stature who have attained or who have had precocious puberty. Then you can give GH with GNRH, glucocorticoid in the short stature, CH, thalassemia major, XLH uh, rickets, skeletal dysplasia. Syndromic uh, short stature and cystic fibrosis. But none of these are approved, and even after a lot of trials, um, there is no good growth velocity in this team. So, what, could, what are the etiologies of growth hormone deficiency per se? So, uh, if you see here, uh, when we investigate, 40% of them are idiopathic. Then we have the acquired, which is because of the tumor or radiation or any autoimmune response or because of the CNS infection. Then is the congenital GHP because of the mutations or structural defects and the syndromic uh, GH syndromes associated with growth hormone deficiency. Uh, going back to basics again, who needs to be investigated? All children who come to you should be investigated for any of the um, FDA approved indications or are there any particular conditions? So, first. I think what you need to know basic is the, your growth charts. You have to be thorough with your growth charts. So you can see here, this is below third centile, but it is quite severe. So maybe minus 5 SD or so. So severe short stature below third centile is investigated. You can see here, the height SDS to uh, SD below the mean for the age and sex. And here you can see the height is less than 1.5 SDS. You can see that the midparental height is there, but the height of the child is well below. So this child definitely needs investigation, even though the child is more than the third centile. Next is if the growth velocity, you can see here, there is a uh, growth velocity is less than 25th centile. Then you need to do investigations. Growth acceleration your properly monitoring or if the child has not been growing, then you need to check if there is any problem and you need to investigate for either growth hormone deficiency or any other conditions. They are coming with short stages. The predisposing conditions, we know that if the child has been operated for any other uh, CNS uh, conditions or child has had any meningitis, encephalitis or had, had a PMP done. So all those conditions have to think and have a proper growth chart and monitor history. Some other indications where you need to monitor growth and be aware is neonatal hypoglycemia, midline defects, any intracranial lesions, signs of multiple hormone deficiency. So the, the, some of the clinical manifestations of growth hormone deficiency, I have already told, may be only short stature. Like in girls, it may be only short stature where they can be Turner syndrome, they are she is short. So you have to do the investigation appropriate for the sex, age, and condition uh, depending on the clinical examination. So in the neonatal period, you can have hypoglycemia, microphallus, hypothermia, jaundice, or dysmorphic features. Whereas there are so many other things, but the most important thing is the growth retardation, which you need to be aware of, to make a diagnosis of growth hormone deficiency. And you can see here, there's a cleft leaf central uh, effects, here. cleft leaf, cleft palate, central incisor, microphallus. These are the things, if a short child comes to you and you uh, get a good history, so you can make a diagnosis of provisional diagnosis of GHD. Once you think clinically as GHP, 
what are the imaging studies uh, dr ganesh has again told about the bone age don't cut off the uh, phalanges or the fingers so you need a good uh, bone age and a proper interpreter then you require an mri if you are thinking of this chd you need to do biochemical investigations like growth hormone and igf axis random gh as i already told is not um, considered you need to do gh stimulation test and there is again a, a very pivotal or pivotal age group whether you need to set uh, steroid priming required or not there are two different schools of thought but i believe in uh, priming and prime the child before doing the hormone stimulation test very pivotal age group about 10 years and we can also do genetic evaluation and you can find some mutations which can help you in the further planning of the condition so what are the gh stimulation test so any any stimulation test whenever you are planning to do you should never do it uh, um in opd without a um, backup support because you never know what can happen while you are doing this test so they have to be monitored whenever you are doing growth hormone stimulation test any textbook will give all the values and the doses for these things there are physiological pharmacological but what we do in india is most commonly is clonidine then is arginine and glucagon um and ghrp2 and mesimorelin are used in adult ghd um, for um, doing a gh stimulation but as i believe i have been trained till now i still believe it is a itt or ghr which is the gold standard if you want the accurate uh, um, gh values when you are doing this and the prerequisites before you do a gh stimulation test is child should be in thyroid and in cortisol so you have to do these uh, thyroid functions and cortisol levels for even thinking of doing a stimulation test child should not have intercurrent illness and sex hormone priming in peri adolescent age group which i already told and at least two tests are required and child should come fasting and when you do a gh stimulation and the values are less than 7 nanogram per ml uh, or is called a gh deficiency it is less than 3 nanogram then it is clear growth hormone deficiency when you see uh, examine the child and you see that there is a syndromic like any of these syndromes then you don't have to do a stimulation test and you can straight away go on and start growth hormone please again i'm talking about igf1 and igf3 uh, we do not uh, do igf1 below 3 years because lot of uh, things are, uh, are dependent on uh, igf is dependent on nutrition illness and liver diseases but not below 3 years igf is better below 3 years we do have some norms whenever you do any test in endocrinology want to do know why you are doing how you are doing and how you will interpret you don't know these three things never do the test that is what would i, I would uh, tell so you do test and then you please interpret them along with the standard uh, values mri brain and is to see if there is any Yeah, size of the pituitary. Uh, see for the posterior pituitary. See if there is any other abnormalities associated, or if there is a mass lesion. You can see here a uh, small pituitary. You can see here septa optic dysplasia and absent pituitary. Stock interruption syndrome. You can have a mass lesion, and you can have septum pellucidum. So MRI gives a clue for the etiology of growth hormone deficiency. so once you have made a diagnosis by clinical biochemical imaging and stimulation test then what growth hormone you need uh, before telling what growth hormone what is the dose of growth hormone uh, when we were post graduates we used to use uh, iu per kg per day it was very very simple if i got uh, if i had a child of 10 kg then it would be 10 into 0.1 so it would be 1 unit um so it was very easy 20 kg child two units but now uh, all companies have made a milligram uh, so this is the conversion so 1 mg is 3 iu or 1 iu is 0.3 mg so if you want to give 2 iu then you have to make it 0.6 mg so you need to know how much to give and what uh, dose you have to give and when to give. see here um, 
there are so many things don't get confused because all the references will give you but i still follow this iu and then convert it or else i use this whenever the child is overweight or obese any of our conditions like growth hormone deficiency turn or pwss all these are obese children so in them it is always better you calculate uh, by body surface area so meter square mg per meter square per day would be the better way of calculating and this would be the dose so what are the growth hormone uh, available uh, available uh, in india we have these biosimilars head on and lipofil the uh, disadvantage is we have to draw from the syringe and each vial will have four units so have uh, every 10 marking will have one one iu and this this comes as iu so you can if you want to give two iu you will have to take the number of 20 so if something is remaining then you can take it for the next day but uh, the bioavailability is not there for more than 48 or 72 hours so you need to be careful when you are telling them if you are giving one unit for four days uh, then it may not be very suitable uh, to give for these children next is we have a nodi trophy from noa nodis get these uh, beautiful looking pens with the different um, um mg is 5 mg 10 mg uh, yellow is for 5 blue is for 10 and green is 15 mg and if you, if i tell you um, the cost of this one um, on an average it's about 180 to 200 uh, rupees for one iu and the next um, both these uh, genotropin from pfizer and uh, nodotropin they are around 300 plus for one iu um the method of uh, um doing this is uh, the other one more advantage is uh, um it's uh, very easy to give in this nodotropin pens because it is a ready liquid whereas here there is a liquid and a powder once you mix it is very easy and the another advantage in this uh, genotropin is in this one you can just fix the dose if you want to give a uh, 0.6 mg you can fix it till your next visit for 3 months and it is this one only you will dial this and click it and while while you are giving it give it and then um count up to 10 or 20 so the other uh, available ones are uh, sizen and when and how you will give is there is no shortcut it has to be daily like how you eat every day how you sleep every day it has to be given daily and it is given at night for sleep cannot give it at 5 uh, o'clock or 6 o'clock and uh, tell them it will grow well it has to be because it has to mimic the circadian rhythm of the growth hormone next is it has to be given subcutaneously this is how you pinch it, it is similar to insulin so you need to tell them and teach them next is how to store never store in the deep freezer or in the door you have to keep in this compartment these things have to be really every visit have to be asked and taught and re again and again reinforced otherwise your results will be bad monitoring main thing is your height velocity and if it is if the child is ghp there will be doubling of height velocity and the next thing what you would do is the igf1 values we need to do igf1 once in 6 months um preferably once in 6 months or once in year and you have to make sure and compare it and check it where the child is falling the igf1 is falling whether it is in the plus 1 or plus 3 if it is going more than plus 2 then i you have to reduce the dose and if the child is not growing and it is um, then you have to check if there is any other problem whether the child has developed hypothyroidism or hypocortisolism and next would be we have to check for the adherence and adverse effects also the adherence you can check by checking how many vials they are using how much you have prescribed and monthly how much they are buying that is the way how you can check because of the cost they may not be uh, really taking regularly like what you have advised the response for the growth hormone treatment depends on the age earlier the age earlier the diagnosis better is the outcome severity of the ghd very good uh, results frequency which i have already told daily not twice daily only once in the night the dose exact dose has to be given and uh, 
uh, other than GH3, most of the other conditions will require uh, a slightly higher dose. And then the bone age delay is more, then the response is much good. And the genetic potential, if you have tall parents, then the, again, uh, um, your genes will be playing and you can always get better results in this. Can have suboptimal growth response because of poor adherence, because of the high cost and late initiation, subtherapeutic dose, or if there are any antibodies which are very, very, very rarely, and the comorbid conditions, hypothyroidism, and lastly, but I wouldn't tell that incorrect diagnosis, that is because if you are, if you are giving after the growth hormone, uh, after the bones are fused. The potential side effects, every visit, every three months, you should call them and check by both history and examination, edema or headaches, um, check for scoliosis, and then see for uh, limb pain, these are less common uh, acute pancreatitis, but uh, hyperinsulinism, if you are giving large dose, but you can develop a glucose intolerance and a high hemoglobin A1C. And uh, we do get gynecomastia in the fertile pu age groups, but once you reduce or stop the medication, it disappears. Uh, <clears throat> obstructive sleep apnea and then malignancy, I'm not going to touch, but I just to tell, no need to worry. If there is a no uh, family history, known case of uh, malignancy, or if radiation, especially high dose is used, then the risk is there, but otherwise you can safely. Uh, to finish off, I want to just share a couple of my cases. She is the girl who came to me uh, at, you can see here, at nine months of age, and she was only around 64 centimeters. I did try to convince her, but she was not convinced. They said they don't have financial support and they uh, left. And then again, promptly came back at 15, where she was exactly in the same uh, height. And then was able to convince her and then put her on growth hormone. And you can see by uh, three years, three and a half years, my last visit when I saw her, beautifully she has grown. And you can see the difference here. And also from uh, 65, she has come to 95. So once you have made a proper diagnosis, the response is excellent, but counseling is what is very much required and also convinced them to do a, to a genetic test and we found a GH1 mutation in this uh, girl. So going on to the next case, uh, this is a sad story of uh, two siblings. They again came to me, she came at 18 years, 16 years and again financial problem and came again at 18 years. She had not grown and you can see the difference and she was only about 105 at this stage. Um, second visit, father got the brother also who is 12 years and he's also short. Um, he uh, got some money and uh, did the genetic testing. Both of them were prop one and they both come from uh, Calcutta. So we have referred them back to uh, PGI because they get free growth hormone. I need to follow them up in their next visit. So it is always very good if you are uh, um, doing a complete workup, complete diagnosis, and you reassure them. And uh, my last case is uh, again this girl. You can see her uh, GH stimulation was uh, subnormal, but once you start treatment, started around six, seven years, and you can see she has already reached the normal uh, centile and but they still want to give because the mid-parental height is here, so we would continue. And uh, even her genetic report came as GHRHR. Uh, so uh, lastly, the G role of GNRH analog and GH, because there is a trend in a lot of doctors using uh, GNRH analog to postpone their puberty. It is not usually recommended unless there is a severe, severe short stature. For example, I had a child who was uh, 12 and a half years but uh, her height is 130, but she started two years. So what will I do? I think that is the only indication here I can go. Uh, not much uh, use and no, trials have not helped. Uh, there are few newer uh, growth promoting agents who are on trial. Uh, long acting GH, weekly GH uh, has been used. Uh, Eutropin uh, from Cipla has been used, but now again, it has gone out of the market because of some side effects. Oral ghrelin analogs and CNP analogs have been in phase three trials. We need to wait and watch for the results. So, this is 
So uh, to complete my talk, uh, the take home message, I think uh, Ganesh and me both tell that growth charts are a must in your office practice. Otherwise, please don't practice endocrinology. Chart stature is more of a clinical diagnosis. Never do a random growth hormone levels. Accurate diagnosis, early diagnosis, early, uh, um, early uh, diagnosis, early treatment, better outcome. We are only a phone call away. Please reach to us from any corner of India. We are here to help. Our children have very short time to grow and a lifetime to give the results. So please help them out right time. Thank you very much.